Hey everybody, welcome to Tea and Chocolate. Today I have a very uh, special guest. Um, I'm an admirer of his work, of photography specifically. Um, his name is Jose Silva Pinto, and he's with me today from Angola, Africa. And um, for those of you who don't know, I'm in Canada, for those of you watching. And um, I've been, um, I guess, admiring uh, Jose's photography for quite some time. Uh, there's a lot of depth to the photography. You will see photos that I've put on my Instagram page, giving him credit, and they're absolutely beautiful. He's a wonderful storyteller, and I just want to welcome you to the program today. Thank you so much, Jose, for taking the time to be with me. Thank you so much for the opportunity to speak with you. Okay. Um, I have not too much time and not too much opportunities like that. And uh, I, I got, I just, I'm here to, to answer your questions. Okay. And to talk. Yes. So, um, you know, before you got into photography, I was learning a little bit about the previous things that you had done, that you had worked in pharma and oil. Um, I know that you were, uh, you're originally from Angola, and then there was a period of time that you spent in Portugal. And, and the rest of Europe. Uh, yeah, Europe, yeah. Asia. I was in Asia also. Okay, so important Asia was very important for me. Vietnam, I was in Vietnam, not during the war. After the war, I was working in gas at that time. And it was important for me. I learned a lot of things from, from right. people. Can you tell me a little bit about your early days and then how that transitioned you to become... I'll say become because you're probably your artist history is always within you, but the transition, what that was like for you. Well, I don't, I don't, I don't like to consider myself as an artist. I like to consider myself as a photographer. Uh, as, as a what, sorry? Photographer. Photographer. As, okay. I, like to, I don't write, I don't, I cannot write very well. I, I confess, I must confess that I'm not a writer. If I was a writer, I, I would like to write books, but I cannot write very well. I can read very well, but I am not a good writer. It means that I have to tell my stories with my camera. This is one way i found to express myself. Um, I like to show what's around me, what I like, what I hate, what I love, what I don't love. And it's why I make photography, most uh, because I want to leave for the next generations uh, information about what we have now, or how we live now. Transition was not very easy because I was a, I had a good life, uh, a huge salary. I worked in oil, I played very, very, very well. And one day I had to move to Nigeria. I was in, in Angola and uh, they asked me to move to Nigeria because I could not work in my country uh, with uh, the same, uh, how do you say this, uh, with the same conditions of, of an expat. I was considered by my company as an expat. But in Angola, as Angolan, I could not have, have this, uh, these conditions. They, they tried to transfer me to Nigeria and I refused because uh, I was a little bit tired. I had maybe 25 years old, 25 years of working around Asia, Africa, Europe. <coughs> I decided I, I want to make something different, something I love. And uh, I decided to start doing photography. And since uh, 2004, um, I only do, I only make photography for a living. If you ask me, it was a, a very easy decision. Uh, no, it was difficult because I had family. I have to change my life standards. Um, I, had, I had no salary at all. I, I was working as a freelancer as I am now. I have no, I, I created my own company with my older son. But since that, uh, I, I quit oil, quit my job, um, I had to count with my, myself on. If I had work, I had money. If I had no work, I had no money. I was a freelancer. It was difficult, but it was a good choice because I'm happy. I'm a different person. I learned much more in this roughly 20 years than I, I had before because I, I have new experience. I had... Uh, I have new, new, I have met a lot of interesting people. They, they, I am learning every day when I, when I go out for taking my photos. 
I don't ask permission to take photos. I just take my photos, and after that, I show why, what I what I need and why I need and I talk, why I talk with people. But before, I never speak with people. And I think that if I speak, I change the mood, <laughs> and people start acting, and I don't ask for acting. I just get what they give me. I get the people how they are. I don't ask them to post, to do this, do that, no, no. I just take pictures. It's my, what I love to do is take the pictures. You agree with me? <laughs> well, I like, I like your process. I like the way, I like your approach. Um, what I notice in your photography is that you, um, I know you don't want to call yourself an artist, but, but as a human being, I felt that this is a gentleman who takes a lot of risks. Yeah, I travel alone, always alone. I, 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 last year, I made 63,000 63, kilometers by car in my country alone. I always drive alone. I sleep on the, the bush. If I don't have a hotel, I sleep on the, the rivers. I take my bath in the rivers. It's, good. it's, it's a little bit wild. But it's fantastic because you got straight, you, you got in the middle of the nature with real people, not people from uh, the city, the big city. In the big city, we will have used masks because now it's because of COVID. But before it was because people are like that. Normally, in a big city, people they don't show who they are. In the bush, no. <laughs> we, we meet the people, real people. Yeah. And I say that. For one week, sometimes for 15 days. If I have money enough, I stay one month. If I don't have money, I have to come back home and make some advertisement work to, keep, to get money <laughs> and go, go away again. All right. <clears throat> well, I think that's kind of a universal understanding or knowing. I mean, I think I can appreciate what you're saying is that when you, you know, go out of a city, you, the climate starts to change. You know, you feel like People are not wearing as um, thick masks as they are as we move in more into nature or, you know, where people are still, I guess, people, you know. Um, so um, what, how did you know that you wanted to be a photographer? Well, I started doing pictures with my father camera when I was maybe eight or nine years old. Wow, okay. My, yeah, my father had a role in a rolling flex. Okay. And uh, I used to, to, to steal his camera and make my photos. But I didn't, normally I didn't tell him uh, I used the camera. He only realized that I used it because when he won't use the camera, there's no film anymore. It's full and it's not possible. And when, that, when he goes to develop the film, there was my, my pictures from chickens, from flowers, from people, <laughs> I just use this camera. And with the age of 18, I, yes, I start uh, in uh, school holidays. I got a job in a refinery as a helper and I got money and I bought my first camera. It, maybe 18, yes, it was a Nikon half. In the second hand, Nikon half was my, my dream. And I, I started doing my own photos. I, I had no money for, 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 for films, and I used to buy a very, very bad film called Orvo from uh, Democrat, Democratic um, uh, from uh, Germany, but before the, the before you had East Germany and West Germany. It's from East from, or from West, I don't know. But, and it was very bad films. And um, I made my, my own roles. I went to the shops and got the, 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 the small, where, where, where you have the rolls inside, I call this uh, cassette, I don't know. Okay. And I, I feel them myself uh, during night in my, in my best room. And it's why I, where I start doing photos uh, like this for me. In 2004, I started working professionally. And since then, I'm a photographer. No more engineer, no more gas, no more oil, only photography. And I love photography. It's, it's a, one way I found that to communicate, to see, to see, to see, and to tell what I see and what I feel. Right. When you were in those industries, did they teach you particular lessons, or did you see things in people? Um, like, how, did that come through your artwork at all? Or okay, so I, I sorry, I meant to say, you know, your photography. Um, you know, what was what was I guess 
what was the big lesson for you when you were working in those industries or what, if at all? Well, when I was, uh, when I, when I was working uh, in oil, I, I had no chance to see much because I, we had no, no, no time. We would work 16, 14, 16, 18 hours a day. Sometimes right. okay. days work. I, I travel a lot. Yes. I was in a few countries, but I had only Sundays free. Uh, and some fun, Sundays I, I could not go out because uh, I had things to do. And this time was not particularly interesting for me because I only had, now I was surrounded with the people I, I used to work, not outside. I made a few connections and a few friends outside, but you, you cannot go inside the, the, the village, go inside, stay there. Because if you want to learn people, if you want to meet people, real people, you must stay there. You must make the same thing they do. They, they must live how they live. And, and when you, I was working in oil, I had not this chance. I had very few time for me. It's because of this, I changed. And I decided to start doing something that allows me to, to go and see and touch and believe and, and, and learn. And um, especially learn. Because in Africa, that's in my country, you didn't write the story, our history. We have no history. We have a political um, history. It's not true. Most of these facts are not uh, proof. And um, we have not, uh, we don't know exactly. It's a big country and we have not the uh, idea how, how things are, what, what's happened over the bush far away from, from the capital. And uh, that's one opportunity to, to see how these people live, how they think, what they want. And they don't ask me much things. They just want a school for kids, a hospital, uh, and um, work. Uh, I, I, I appreciate to stay with them because they can turn difficulties in, in good things. They have nothing. Not only they are, they don't have water, potable water. They sometimes they walk 20, 25 kilometers a day, kilometers a day. Normally, women. To, 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 to get water, they work, they work in the farms, in small farms for, 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 for feeding the, the kids and the family. And the women are the, are the motor of my society, of my country. They, they, if, if you have no women, it's for the disaster. They make everything happen here. They are fathers, mothers, uh, yeah. they work, they teach, they, they do everything. All right, right. And we have to learn with these people because they don't ask you anything. They don't ask anything. They just ask the minimum. And let them in peace, give them work, and they make things happen with nothing. This is important. Right. So, so um, you were just describing that, that you know, there's um, the, the women are walking long distances for fresh water, yes? Yes. Okay. Sometimes. This is outside of the city of Angola, correct? Outside of city one or, or the cities, because we have uh, you have cities and you have uh, uh, people living 200, 300, 400 kilometers from the cities. And there you have nothing, no, no potable water, no, no, no power, no energy. Right. And the people, even, even to cook, they have to cut uh, trees. That's right. a big problem in Angola because there's uh, huge areas that are burned every year because people have to make coal yeah. or to sell, yeah. to make food. In, in your opinion, are there any advantages to living life like that? Yes. Tell me. I, the, the, the main advantage, advantage is they live real life. They what's are a real not, life to you? They are not concerned with green passes because they, not, they don't even know what is COVID. COVID? They, yeah, they don't know. Uh -huh. what is, oh, right. You know. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> they, don't green pass, they don't need, they don't make um, rallies against or pro or against. I don't know, even that is, exists. They don't hear, they don't watch TV. They have a more healthy life than we have because we are permanently, um, they, they give us every day, televisions are giving us every day a bunch of things that are not true and these people are free they don't have television they don't listen to radio they make their own music 
they dance their own music, they make their own clothes, they eat their own food. They are not aware, they are not aware with vaccines, green passes, rallies. They are free. They are much happier than me or you. Yeah. They, yeah. They, they don't depend on a salary because they 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 use what they, they produce. Yeah. They they have the lands, their rivers. They fish, they fish, they, they used to fish, they used to kill some animals for it. Mm -hmm. They are much more happy than me, much more free. Yeah. If you ask me if I would like to do this, yes. I would like to live like that. You would? Yeah. You you, you, well, you you do go out there though, out to the bush to, if I say it that way, or out into the country to um, live in those moments when you're taking photographs. Yeah, I stay there. I live there, and yes. I, I, yes. I, I, as I can. I'm not a good cooker. I, I don't cook very well. <laughs> okay. I'm not a very good hunter, but I, I am a good photographer. When you take your fo uh, photograph, um, are you are you a perfectionist? I don't care much with the. Uh, uh, yes, technically, I have to do uh, my good job. My job as best as I can because I'm, uh, I'm not, a, I don't use uh, Photoshop and uh, I, I use but minimum because I, I'm not a good one. I, I don't, I don't understand very much about Photoshop. It, and I think this is a powerful tool. Okay. It's a fantastic tool. But if you don't know how to use, you don't, you don't make a good job on your photos. Mm -hmm. um, I used to see some pictures of people on, on, on social networks. Uh, most yeah. of the well, story, and they use so many filters that sometimes I don't know if I'm looking for a person or to uh, something like some some other thing. Mm -hmm. I think that you have to use the, these tools when you know how to use them. If you don't know, the right. best thing take your pictures as best as you can. And technically, yes, I'm I'm perfectionist and I take care, but the rest is how I I just take photos. Of when I feel and what I feel, mm -hmm. I don't, I don't do, well, I frame, I, I make compositions, but I'm not very, I'm not very concerned to, to make the picture that someone will like or not. I like, I'm, I'm the first judge. I'm, I'm, I judge my, myself. Uh, yeah, who, yeah, yeah. I, like, I don't care if you don't like. Yeah. <laughs> That's wonderful. Um, what's your uh I, I don't know if you live like this but you know we in the west <laughs> uh we often like set goals um on attaining and achieve uh, and achieving things and how we i guess base our success on and it, it's different for everybody right what what's yes. that like what's that like for you what what do you feel successful about or um is that even a goal for you and that's not you know, there's no right or wrong answer you know it's just i'm curious about what your approach to life is, I guess. I will live my life in a daily basis. Today, I have, I'm very happy because I have a good, very good breakfast uh -huh. and a very nice lunch. And I took a nap and I will make some photos maybe tonight on, in my studio. And my goal, and I, uh, yes, I'm success, successful because I'm talking with you right now. Uh huh. Okay, got it. Okay. Um, Simple. I, I have, I, yeah, I don't have many plans about money, cars, houses. I like to travel. It's true. I would like to travel. I have some some trips to do, but I don't work thinking in money about money. But money, I have. Okay, if I have a lot of money. It's good. I can buy an airplane, a boat. Something I can travel around the world if I don't know how to have money. I don't buy a boat, but I can go traveling around without money. I can travel and working for eating, working for sleeping. Mm. Okay, I don't care too much with with goods, with, with things. Yes, for me, people, yeah. people are very important for me. If I can help someone to be happy, okay, let's do it. Okay, and I don't have goals, special goals. I don't want. I, I used to say I don't. I don't have international uh, rewards or 
premiums or prices because I don't want to participate on these things. I don't go to the these uh, exhibitions and uh, I do my work. I publish on this network. If people like, okay. If they don't like, okay. It's, oh, it's uh, the way I do. First, I like. If I like, it's perfect. If you don't like, sorry, but I like. <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Now, do I you just have, have the one son, or do you have other children? Yeah, I have two. You have two. I have one. My my, my uh, I was I teach him to, to I used I used to teach me teacher about photography. Now we teach me. <laughs> now is he in Angola? Are you, both your children in Angola? He's in Lisbon. We have a small studio in Lisbon. He's a, a very good product private product photographer. In He's Lisbon. In, yeah, in Lisbon. We have a small. We have a small studio. I have, I'm in Luan, Angola, and he's living in in uh, in Lisbon. Maybe I go there to next month to, to stay with him. Into to Portugal. Little, to yes, Portugal. I want, yeah, I, I want him to teach. I want him to teach me some uh, something in Photoshop. He's a specialist in Photoshop, and I will learn. Oh yeah, excellent. Yes. Excellent. So there was a photograph um, <clears throat> that I saw of um, of the amputee. Ah oh, yes. Yeah. Yes. Where did you find those? This is a. I had a program. I, I participated in a project with World Press Photo many years ago. Maybe, maybe not many. Maybe five, six. No, 2010. 2010. Yes. I was in Burkina with them, and uh, when I came back to Angola, I had a project in mind. It was about uh, World Press Photo. This 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 project was about football, uh, about the World World Championship football 2010. I don't remember exactly, but I went to Burkina. I I, I was uh, I, I had a project in Burkina. I want to shoot inside the the, the prison, a uh, women prison and a men prison during the transmission of a, a football match to see the reaction of the people, how these people normally consider uh, violent, uh, um, they was in jail, how would they react to a football match? I had a plan to, to make shoots inside, shooting inside a women a jail and a man jail. I could not make, not one, I, could, I had to make a different job because I, I didn't get permission to go inside with cameras. When I came back to Angola, I had the, the idea to make something related with sport, but with people, the disabled people, uh, maimed people, amputees. And I went to Wambo. Wambo is a uh, province in the center of Angola, where uh, you have, uh, we have a center that take care of these people that lost uh, members or legs or with mines, landmines. It was supported by Lady Di. This uh, this uh, this center was supported by Lady, Lady Di. Lady Di, yes. Yes. And, yes. Okay. And I went there maybe ten years after her. Okay. Uh, I I knew, I, met, I met a lot of people, especially women, without one leg or without two legs, because these people work in in in. in in agriculture, and there's a lot of mines, and they are mainly the big biggest victims of mines are women and children. And I made this photo because this lady was learning how to walk again. <laughs> it uh, was fantastic because she was uh, she was using steps, wood steps, and each time she could go from one step to a higher step was a party. She was really um, happy because she had accomplished one, one, one more step in, 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 her, in her new new learning because she was learning how to, to walk again. Right. And um, I stayed with her, Louisa, maybe two weeks. And um, she was learning how to use the, this prothesis. prothesis. Yeah, yeah, prothesis, yeah. And then um, and she was, it was painful for her because uh, she, she was not used to this, to use yeah. this kind of thing. Right. And uh, we spent maybe one, yeah, two weeks together. And it was fantastic. I made a fantastic photo from her. And I never, I never used these photos because I lost most of them. Uh, 
I had um, a hard drive burn and I lost. I had a backup, but not all the work. I think that she's not alive anymore. She died, she's passed away. She was not very old. She was maybe 45 years old when I met yeah. her. Yeah. She's gone because here we, we die very soon. People here die. It's not like in Europe that you live at 120 years old, 100 years old here. It's difficult to find one person that's 70 years old. In Angola? Yes. So, sorry, they're, you're, they're dying earlier? Yes, much earlier because uh, there's, medicine doesn't, is not so, so, uh, so advanced as that, that you have in Europe, the conditions, the treatment. Understood, yeah. Doctor says we have, we have a very a huge problem. Also with kids, we have the largest uh, number of deaths of kids uh, until five years old. We are in the first place. Uh, how do you call this? The deaths uh, of kids, the number of kids dying from and uh, before five years is the highest in in all. It's, it's from Angola. Well, it was I don't know the numbers now, but. Now we have this problem. We have problem with um, the people dying very, very early because uh, we have problems. With, 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 help help yeah. me understand this. Is this because of these? Is this because of politicians or what is it? No, yeah, we have oh, wow, our, poli our politicians. Most of them are cor corrupted. Wow, well, big problem is corruption. Right, right. Education is our main problem. Most of our people are not educated. Uh, and, and after this corruption is it's our second problem. Country with corruption doesn't go uh, doesn't go further. Mm -hmm. well, money that you have to spend in education and health, you spend with cars and uh, buildings in Europe or all over the world. So <clears throat> okay, I, I'm going to get back to that, but I just want to touch base a little bit back into your photography because. You, your photography is, as I was saying earlier, I think you're a great storyteller. They're very thought provoking and they're very soulful, very, you know, it's like, so as I, I looked at your photographs. I thought, what goes, what's inside the mind and the heart of this person, Jose being you taking these photographs, you've done nature landscapes, Africa, oh, Africa. Um, yeah, people, I, okay, go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> I do everything that I like. Uh, well, when I see landscapes, normally I, I when I shoot landscapes, I'm listening music. I need music to take photos from landscapes, and I oh. used to listen to Bach. Yeah, it's passing. He's a great companion. And when I make, I, when I want to do long exposures, I I use Bach. I don't know why, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but I like people. I like shoot people because people. All of us, we have stories to tell. Yes. Even, yep. even, if, we, if, even if you don't say a word, your expression, your eyes, your hands, your body, you have a body language, uh, eye language, uh, and you can tell stories without words. When I shoot people, I don't think, I, I not only respect, I have to respect these persons because mm -hmm. before, I look at them, I must put myself in their place. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> I should very close to the people. I don't use uh, zooms. I, I use common lenses, normally 50, mil, 50 millimeters or 85. And I sometimes I'm shooting people from not even one meter. I can feel the smell. I can feel even the breast. The breast, the breast. And uh, I don't ask permission. I show myself. I stay in front and I take my pictures. Sometimes uh, I had problems in the past, yes. Um, <laughs> sometimes I will, I'm arrested by the police because they don't like what I do. Oh, and, wow. okay. Yeah, I'm not used to that. And for me, it's funny because I make friends in the jail also. All right, yeah. Jesus. <laughs> Last time I was arrested was in Congo. I was arrested in Congo. I was doing the Congo. Uh, Oh yes, I, had okay. one more. I was in my, with my son and we were walking on the street and he took a picture and police came and arrested us and uh, we stay one day in jail. And oh. we, 
a lot of friends. Uh, I, we stay one week and we had a, a party every day because family of these guys in jail, they invite us to go dinner, to go lunch, because we, have, we, make, we, we, we make friends in, in jail. I, I think jail is a good place to okay. meditate and to make friends. Yeah, that's, that's I, wonderful. I, no, you 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 could live in Portugal, correct? If you wanted to, you can yes. have more of the you know the amenities that you feel a little bit more comfortable. Why why don't you? If you don't mind my asking that. For me, it's, it's a fantastic country. I like I like the food. I cannot live there because I have to. I because I like too much their food. Which food? Portuguese food. Okay, yeah. So you're, but I'm. <laughs> but you don't live. But you don't live in Portugal. I don't live in Portugal. I, I was living in Portugal. My first language is Portuguese, and uh, I I have a house in Portugal. I have a, a company in Portugal, but I cannot live there because the food is too good, the wine is too good, and the people are very good. And if I stay there, I don't work. I spend my time eating. Oh my God! <laughs> And I get weight, and I have no clothes after. After a while, I have to buy every time houses, and I'm, I'm getting fat, 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 because I like. <laughs> now I cannot live in Europe basically because I don't like. The, I like cold station. I, I like winter. I like very much winter. But my body is more, much more prepared for hot, hot, hot days, and uh, I can stand. I, I live in Russia. I live in Switzerland, and. Uh, in Holland, it's cold countries, but very hot people, very, very good people. And but, but I prefer to stay in Africa because the smell is different, the color of the, the the land is different, the green is different, the sky is different, the languages are different, the smells are very different. Uh, rhythm, the music. Uh, I think Europe, you in Europe, you have to to walk to walk this way. You cannot go in this way because people don't like. You have to stay here. You do much rules. In Africa, you have, you have freedom to create your own rules sometimes. Wow. Okay. Okay. But, uh, <laughs> I believe you know, I could live in, in Portugal, but I believe that I would not be totally happy. Despite the food is amazing. I don't know if you know Portuguese food. You have to try. I, I, so, yeah. I have tried, yes. Yes. Yeah, yeah. With the lines, because if you go there, like you go like this, you come like that. Right. <laughs> <laughs> people are very, very good people. They are amazing, especially in the north. If you go to the north, poor, oh, yeah. no, they are simply amazing. Mm -hmm. But uh, I decided to stay in my country. I love, I love my country. Sometimes I'm very angry with my country because we could make good things and we don't do because we are stupid. And, um, but it's, I want to die here. Oh, you do? Yeah, I reserved already a small place in, in, the, in the, the, the desert. That's where I want to be. Um, it's my last house. It's in the desert. I want to be buried, buried in the desert. If possible, yeah. And then, listen, I want people to listen to Pink Floyd during my uh, dying ceremony. I don't want people crying, but I want people dancing because in Africa, when someone dies, we dance and we sing because we think this guy is dead, but he's going to another place, better place. <laughs> and uh, yeah. it's a different philosophy. We should cry also, but we dance more than we cry. Yeah. Are, are you as well, are you spiritually um, inclined or I don't you're probably not religious are you I believe in myself pardon me I believe in myself and I trust myself and I trust you sound like but uh, I respect everyone that has a religion or a, or, or spiritual path. It. yeah it says, you know, I live in, in different places and I respect everyone who thinks different differently from me yeah yeah if they okay. like to, to believe in god okay yeah or in a, okay for me it's okay i yeah. don't have any problem to accept this yeah 
when well, I was as I'm speaking to you today, you very much uh, it, what comes across that you very much um, do believe in yourself that you are very much the master of your path. Yeah, I, I must decide what I want. I don't let anyone decide what I want and what what I have to do. Right. <laughs> I'm uh, master of my my path. Yes. Pardon me. I'm the master of my path. Yeah. I agree with you. Right. We right. agree. Do you realize that we are and we agree a lot? What's that? Sorry. Do you realize that we agree a lot? You and I. Yes. <laughs> I like it. <laughs> well, you, you have more courage than I do. I'll tell you that right now. So if we're going to be comparing notes. <laughs> you cannot say that. You didn't try. You didn't prove yourself yet. Well, that, yeah. I mean, lately with all the things that's happened in the world and uh, my own kind of full circle of life. Um, uh, yeah, sure. I mean, I can say that I've done some great things. I say, I think that I can also say that I probably will, I could stretch myself more, you know, so we'll see what happens. Yeah. Um, do you have any uh, next projects coming up? Uh, I, I, every day, every day I think about the project. Oh, yeah. I want to, I want to go to China. Uh, oh. I want to go, yeah. I want to go to, to Canada because I want to make landscaping. And oh, maybe well, we one have day. beautiful landscapes here that you could nature. I, I think that you'd appreciate. There's two things I love: is Playboy magazines oh. <laughs> and National Geographic magazines. Okay, so Playboy and National Geographic. Okay. Those okay. Have, have landscapes that I will never see, probably. <laughs> it's a joke. I'm. <laughs> Um, I like to play. I like I like jokes. So I tell myself jokes. Part of me. I tell myself jokes. You tell yourself I, jokes. I, yeah. Yeah. I talk with myself and I speak to myself and I I I lost I like I lost I lost about myself. Mm -hmm. I'm perfectly um I'm perfectly okay with this. Yeah. So tell me something. You, you, where did you, you know, speaking about like the master, like of our minds and of our path, where do you think that you adopted that very early on? Like, how did you, where did that come from? Do you think? Uh, I think from my, my mother and my, my, my parents' education, we were teach. My, my mother used to ask me to keep, to cook once a week when I was maybe 10, 12 years old. Oh Yeah. Um, yeah, we, I had one, uh, each, each kid had to make a, a meal for the whole family once a week. At that time, I, I, I tell you, it was not very, very good for me because I didn't like that. But after I realized that she was teaching me, I don't think that, uh, I can, I can do every, everything I need to survive uh, or to, uh, or to live because my mother to teach me that. She gave me all tools, cooking, taking care of my clothes, uh, to be responsible for my, my schedule, my time, to organize myself. I learned it, I learned that from my mother. And uh, from the lessons I got from her, I learned that the only way I, to survive in this world is to be full independent. I don't depend. I depend from, from my friends. I don't have a lot of friends, so my kids or my friends. But I learned a lot from my mother. She gave me all those, all these uh, lines, guidelines to behave like a, hmm. a normal and a, a well uh, positioned person. My yeah. mother, she was my, my master. Mm hmm. Was this in? Um, I know that you you were raised in um, Angola and Africa. Um, were was were that was that specific time in Angola or in Portugal? I was born here. I left Angola with fifteen. After yeah. 
with 20 I left, I left Portugal, I went to Switzerland and traveled around and I came back to Angola in 2000 from right. Vietnam. I came back yes. to one. Yes. But when you moved when you were 15, did you go with your family or did you go straight to Portugal? Because you went to school in Portugal, yes? I went to Portugal and I went alone. Pardon me? My, my family was in Portugal, but I was living alone. I decided right. to live. All right, right, right. Okay. Try how, how, how it was to be, how, how it was living alone. I was 15 when I started living alone. Mm -hmm. And then I was uh, living, I, I used to stay with my parents, but just visiting. Yeah. Okay. 15, I was perfectly independent. Mm -hmm. And uh, with 15, I think that was last time my, my father gave me money. Mm -hmm. After that, no. Yeah. So when you, as you've, move forward in your life do you often think about your ancestors like your parents but even those who came before them yes mm -hmm. they both passed away already yeah but they are in my mind when i have doubts i think about my mother yes right and i speak with my mother many times even if she was not physically present yeah I have problems when I have doubts, when I have fear. I don't say, oh my God, I say, oh my mother. All right. Wow. That's fantastic. Yes. I, I, sometimes I have, I, I have fear. I, and uh, when this happens, I, I think about my mother and everything changes. And so, I don't know. I cannot explain you why. Or, well, why I think about about my mother, not about the, another superior force. Sure. I see my mother, and, yeah. and I sometimes I have difficult situations, especially on the road. Um, I don't use guns. I don't. I travel without guns. I don't have a gun. Um, I had some difficult situations in very remote locations, uh, and I'm alive. <laughs> Well, life is mysterious, you know. Um, is it more, so I, I just want to kind of end off a little bit with um, your surroundings and your safety. And if you could kind of enlighten me on what you feel our world is going through right now through, through your eyes. What I feel or what I would like to feel. Right. You... Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Can you pose me the question again? I'll let you. Wait, well, the first question is, is how, how, do you, just from a curious, I'm just curious, I've never been to Africa and, and specifically to Angola. I mean, you feel more or less safe living there. Yes? No. I, 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 I'm, as I told you, um, you, may, you must make your own safety. Okay. I make my own safety. I, I before I go to a place, normally I study the way where I should go. Last year I tried to cross the border uh, illegally to Congo. It was stupid. Yes, I admit it. it was a very stupid idea. Now I can say that it was a stupid idea because uh, I tried to get the permission to go legal. I was so problematic that I decided to cross during night, crossing rivers. Um, and it was not funny and it was not intelligent for me. And the result was not very good. This means that I put myself in an unsafe situation. And I was stupid. Uh, and Africa is a, is a continent uh, with a lot of problems. Um, but especially because uh, people are the people have no future. They have. They start getting notion that the future is something that they will never have, unless something extraordinary happens. We are not violent. Uh, Angola is a very peaceful country. If you re if you look to conditions, people's conditions and salaries and life conditions, people are very peaceful. You don't have even the problems that you find in Brazil, Sao Paulo. No, no. Yeah, far away from that. I feel myself safe. Safe, yeah. Sometimes I'm I'm afraid. Yes, 
Many times I'm afraid, yes. I travel by night most of the time. I make roads by night. Yeah, I prefer night than day. I sleep during the day. It's normally under the trees. Um, and night is more cold, and I prefer to stay inside my car. And days I take photos and I sleep, and I drive by night. I like night. Mm -hmm. And your, what's your perspective? What's that? Unless something very special in, in, on the road, if I, if I sus suspect or, or if I know that something very important or very special to be seen, then I, I drive, drive during the day. But most yeah. of the time, I So if you, you, if you like night, what, what's, what, what is it about the night that intrigues you? Night is, is, is more silent. Right, yeah. You, you are more with you. Mm -hmm. When I drive during night, I, I speak a lot with myself. I, I tell myself stories. Uh, uh, I drive with the, sometimes with an imaginary friend. I create a friend in my mind. He stay with me in my car. And you talk during one hour, two hours. <laughs> you know, I, well, last time I tried to speak about Dow Jones, but it was not funny because I don't understand. He didn't understand very well the the capitalism mechanics and uh, it was difficult to, to make a conversation but yes. this uh, life is very silent and it's very it's very you you, you are yourself you, especially if you're alone in a car in a road you don't know you must be concentrated in, in, in your past and and, uh, and it's easier to to spend five six hours driving with good music yeah that's something you know, uh, a virtual or imaginary friend. Yeah. Beautiful. That's beautiful. Um, <clears throat> so if um, you mentioned earlier that, you know, uh, that uh, many of the Africans are out uh, away from the cities don't know COVID, you know, they didn't, and that they don't really understand, they don't know what's um, going on from that perspective, but in, in the city and, and, What's your perspective of this whole thing that's going on? But on, on a global perspective, what what's your what are your thoughts? I, I think that um, the, the the figures, the numbers that uh, are announced here, they are not real. They are all fake because we we don't even know how many how many people lives in Angola. We we estimate that are maybe thirty million. But we don't know exactly, even in the cities, we don't know how many people are living there because we don't make this account, uh, accountability. Um, I believe that uh, we have so many problems with malaria. Malaria kills much more than, uh, than COVID uh, here. Okay, okay. Right. Don't care too much about this. We, are, we use masks because on the beginning we were obliged to, we are forced to use masks, but if you go now on the street, most of the people don't use it. And yeah. you cannot you cannot avoid, you cannot use this in social distance, but okay, maybe in the mall, in the bar, in the restaurant, in the supermarket, okay, you can maybe um, uh, keep the people uh, away. But outside this, on the street, in, in, in the neighborhood, in, 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 uh, in the ghetto, you cannot. People live, uh, live all together. It's, it's quite difficult to keep these people uh, mm -hmm. to you to ask them to, to, to behave in a different way. It's quite difficult. Yeah, right, right. I think that COVID kills a lot of people, but malaria kills much more. Malaria, yeah. Well, thank you so much for today. Oh, it was a pleasure for me. When you come? <laughs> Yeah, I'll, I'll promise you, I'll take you to a very nice trip to the desert. Okay. It's 300, 380 kilometers from coast. You, you drive, here you have a dune, and here you have your, your way, and here you have the sea. And uh, during the night, you can fish for food. And uh, you are invited. Thank Just you. The, Thank you. Get your, your, your backpack. Yeah. <laughs> I have one of those.
Um, right. Anyway, I, I, I just stay with me. I'm just going to end off the program. So um, I just want to thank everybody for, you know, viewing this uh, session today. If you want to see Jose's work, you can go to his web website, tonspi.com. So T-O-N-S-P-I.com to view his beautiful photography. And yes, absolutely. And I look forward to uh, seeing more of, uh, of your uploads uh, on LinkedIn. I follow uh, Jose on LinkedIn. That's where I came across him. It's been such a blessing. And it's been absolutely lovely to speak with you today. Thank you so much and take good care. Thanks, everyone. See you. Bye.